So guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is your host, Santos Capilan Jr. Always wishing you a good day. Guys, today what I'm going to do is start my video tutorial for DMS software integration. Okay, so DMS software integration part one. Okay, guys. So first, let me tell you something about DMS software integration. Now, uh, basically, we are doing software integration if we will not be able to get the control and monitoring points from a system through physical wires. When I say physical wires, these are the wires being pulled from the DC panel going to the uh, control panel of a system. Okay. Now, software integration means we are going to get the control and monitoring points from a system through software integration. Now, this one involves uh, different uh, communication protocol like backnet over IP, backnet MSTP, uh, LON, Modbus, uh, CAN, and etc. Okay? So, meaning uh, we are... Uh, obliged to do software integration for some third-party system. So what are these third-party systems? Okay, so let me show you. Okay, uh, let me share screen. Okay, where is my, let me, okay, so just bear with me. So, Again, so this will be my BMS software integration third-party system, okay? So as I said, uh, third-party system or system that is using, maybe it will be using different, uh, the same uh, communication protocol as your uh, BMS system. Maybe you are using BACnet over IP or BACnet MSTP, then this third the party system, maybe this CPM is using also BACnet over IP. Okay, so as I said, software integration is when you will use a single cable, a communication cable, wherein this cable will be pulled going to the third party system to be connected to our uh, network controller. Or uh, in BMS, we have what we call network controller, like my automation server, you have seen already my automation server. Now, this automation server is capable of communicating to different systems because I have there two ports, port A and B, wherein my port A, I can uh, dedicate it to my BACnet MSTP system. Then another port, uh, which is port B, I can dedicate it to other uh, third-party system, like if I have PMU power monitoring unit, which communicate through Modbus, BFD. It also communicates through Modbus, but there are uh, there BFD or third-party system that is used in different uh, communication protocol. Now, what is important here, guys, is uh, you need to have a good uh, relation with the supplier of this third-party system, okay? Now, uh, let's say the CPM. This is a chiller plant manager. Okay, now uh, supplier will be the one to supply the chillers. Okay, then they will be the one also to supply the DDC panel or their chiller plant manager system that will control the entire operation of the chillers. Okay, so maybe the CPM. Uh, communicating through, uh, I mean, the communication protocol is BACnet over IP, okay? So you will be doing software integration through BACnet over IP, which is very easy to do, okay? Now, let's say your BMS project, you have this PMU. Now, this PMU is a power monitoring unit. Basically, these are communicating through Modbus. These electrical devices are communicating through uh, Modbus, okay, then BFD. Likewise, variable frequency drive is also using Modbus protocol, okay. Then MCB, molded circuit uh, breakers, molded 
case circuit breakers or air circuit breakers, these are also using mode bus. Okay, but there are some breakers that can communicate through other protocol. Okay, then you have also generator, then other uh, third party system. Okay, so guys, uh, this will be the different third party system that you might do software integration or DMS software integration. Okay. Now let me minimize this one. Okay, let me uh, share this screen. Share. Okay. Now what I have here, actually, uh, new share. Okay, where is this one? Let me share this screen. Okay, guys. So uh, in my BMS training station, I have two uh, communication modules. So for this tutorial, I will be doing uh, BMS software integration for these communication modules. Okay, so what are these communication modules? Well, first, I have here the CCM mod bus. This is a Schneider product wherein it can communicate through air circuit breakers. When it's communicating with uh, air circuit breakers, it is capable of giving to the BMS the different uh, real-time monitoring values like face-to-face -face voltage, let's say voltage 1, line 1 to line 2, voltage from line 2 to line 3, then voltage from line 3 to line 1. Then it can show you also the current being drawn by its face, okay? Then it can show you also the power factor. So it, the, the reactive power, the truth, and so many information regarding the air circuit breakers, okay? Then I have also one, uh, another type of communication module here, this TDR00210, okay? So this one also is used, used for communicating to air circuit, uh, MCCB, wherein it is capable of giving the information being read by this uh, ACCB from that MCCB, okay? So what I'm going to do is how we are going to do the software integration for this, uh, specifically this TRB00210 Modbus communication module, okay? As you can see, it's already powered up, okay? Now, these communication modules are getting power supply from this uh, transformer okay now the supply is uh, 24 volts dc okay so 24 volts dc so uh so let me share my uh let me go back to my system okay so this is my system okay where we are going to do the third party software integration as i said i have my automation there okay Wherein there will be, uh, where is my ports, okay? So I have serial port here. Let me do this one. Serial port, I have communication port A, then I have communication port B, okay? Now my communication port A is dedicated to my BACnet MSTP or my BACnet controllers, okay? Now for this RS485 communication port B, I will be using this for our third party uh, soft BMS software integration, okay? So make sure, uh, first of all, uh, if you are doing the software integration, let's say uh, if you check the specification, then you will see that there will be uh, third party system like variable frequency drives if you are being asked to monitor and to prepare or to monitor all the monitoring points of that variable frequency drive the first thing you have to know is how I'm going to get the information from that device okay so you need to check your automation server so what are the supported uh, communication protocol of my automation Okay. Then if it is supported, then you will create the interface. Okay. So today, what I'm going to do is to create our interface. Okay, so I will create our interface for this communication module. Because let's say in a project, you have around, uh, maybe you have air circuit breakers from your uh, 
uh, low voltage LB, MB, and HB panels. Maybe you have around uh, maybe 20 of this communication module, and maybe you have around 100 of this communication module. So you need to monitor each communication module because each module will be connected to a specific MCCB and this one is connected to a specific ACCB but it could be network also. Now the like this one for TDR00210 you have to set the address because as I said maybe you have around 50 of this in the entire project. So you will connect it uh, in a daisy chain or bus topology. Okay. So I already explained in my previous tutorial what is bus topology. Okay. So, but you need to change the address or you have to provide a unique address for this one because it will become a slave uh, mode bus device. Okay. So there are uh, way how you are going to set the address. Like this one, the address of this is Okay, so this one is times one, so it is set to four. Okay, so this is four. Then this one is times ten, this is set to zero. So meaning the address of this communication module is uh, four. Okay, so this is my slave device number four. Device address is number four. Let's say you want to change it to uh, 50. If you want to change it to 50, how are you going to do it? Now you need to get a small screwdriver, then rotate this and point it to 5. Okay, so that is 5. Then from here, this is a multiplier. So times 10, then you will put it to 1. Okay, 10. So 10, uh, I'm not very sure. Okay, I need to change it. Okay. Because I changed it to 4. So right now the address of this is 4. If I will make it to 50. So I will make this 5. Then times 10. Because here it is times 1. So it, uh, it's a little bit confusing. But anyway, I will uh, include it in my next tutorial part 2. Okay? So anyway, uh, for, if you are going to change it to 50, go to 5. Then go to 1 times 10. Okay, so that is 5 times 10 is 50. Or maybe 5, then if you put it to 10, then it will be 15. Let me try it, okay? So, uh, actually, you will ask me how you know that the address is correct. I will show you, okay? So, let me go to my system again. Okay, share. Okay, now, okay. Actually, so as I said, I will dedicate this communication port B to my uh, uh, mode bus communi uh, communication module. Okay, so from automation server, what you need to do here is, of course, you need to create a new interface. Okay, so interface is like this will be the physical connection of those communication modules. So we have here different interface, okay? I have shown you already the backnet interface in my previous tutorial, okay? If you are following my channel. Then here, we will be doing the Modbus interface. Why Modbus? Because the communication protocol being used by our communication module, Modbus is Modbus. So we are going to create the mode bus interface. Now, there are several selections. Okay. Now, what I've used here is the mode bus master network. Okay. So, mode bus master network because my automation server will act like the master. Then, the one that will be connected will act like the slaves. Okay. So, you will just rename what is being offered by the server here. You can say mode bus master network 2, 3, 4, whatever uh, name you will put it there, okay? Now, I will not create that one because I already created uh, a while ago. Okay, now let me just show you my created Modbus interface. So this is the Modbus interface I have created, okay? Now, so MCCB, actually I just named it to MCCB1, okay? 
but you can rename it later. Okay, so Modbus Master Network. Uh, I think this is the uh, this is the device. This is the device that I added. Okay, so properties. Let's look at the properties. Okay. Now first, what is important here? You have to know if your Modbus master network is online because if it is offline, of course, you cannot establish communication to your uh, slave devices. Okay, then you have to have online here. Then you have to specify some of parameters here. Now, framing mode will be remote terminal unit. Okay, so you will have to select this RTU. Then the baud rate, okay, I already explained this. This is how fast you're going to call the information from that slave device, okay. Again, the, the, I mean this one. Now you can use 19 to 100, okay. But for the time being, I will use 9,600 baud rate, okay. Then parity. Now you have to check this parity stop bits and JBus mode if these are being supported by your slave devices, okay. Then the port reference, as I said, I'm referring to communication port, okay. Then advanced, that is the basic tab, advanced here, okay. So just accept what is being uh, offered there, okay. The basic, what is important here, you make your master network online, okay. Because you will not be able to call data from slave devices if it's not online, okay. Now, uh, we have our master, Modbus master network. Okay, now, how are you going to add those slave devices? Okay, so let me just show you the new then Modbus device. Okay, so Modbus device, you will just say, let's say, I will say, N, okay, MCC, molded circuit breaker number two. But of course, you have to make the, your uh, device more descriptive. Let's say where is the location of this. So which maybe which uh, control panel this one is serving. Okay, something like that. Okay, so but let me just do it as MCCB. Then create. Okay, so sending complete now. Okay, so here. So let me close this. So from here. Okay, so as you can see here, I already have two MCCB here. So meaning this. I'm referring to the communication port. Okay. Now this MCCB we can also check. Okay. Now actually I already configured this one beforehand. So what is important here again is you need to see if your uh, if the the buy or the slave device is online. Okay. So let me show you again my. This one, as you can see, this is snapshot of my uh, communication module in my training station. As you can see, this is already powered up. Okay, now uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, let me go back to my system. As you can see here, it is online. Now the device address is four. If you will change this address, then Okay, we'll say, let's say we will change it to 5, then save. We will see if it will go offline, then we will do something like this. Okay, it's still online, it should go offline. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see, now it's offline because my port B is trying to communicate to slave device number 5 which is not present right now because the uh, communication module, the yeah, address of that one is four. Okay. So in the next tutorial, I will try to change it to uh, the, the one I'm showing you if I want to change it to 50. Okay. Now it's already online. So if it is online, okay, if it is online, so you are ready to uh, call or get the information in that communication module. So what information you are going to get from that module? Okay, guys, as a BMS engineer, as I said, you need to really coordinate with the supplier of this FCCB communication modules. Because if you will not have a good relationship with this supplier, it will give you a headache in the client. Okay? 
because they need to provide you some information so that you will be able to display the correct value being monitored by this communication module. Because the consultant, they will always check this if the value being displayed in your BMS graphics is matching the value from the field. This is very important, guys. Okay, So you need to ask several information. One of the information that you need to ask from the supplier, like for this uh, PRV00210, you need to ask the uh, mod bus or the register mapping or the mod bus register mapping of the device. Okay? Because that communication mod bus, it has registers that will show you the correct value or the real time value from the field. Okay, so what are these? Uh, to, just to give you an idea, uh, what are these information? Okay, as you can see here in my screen, I have here the uh, sample of registers. Okay, now actually this is also coming from Snyder. Now let's say you want to monitor the RMS face to face voltage, meaning voltage of line one to line two, you need to, okay, the range is zero to 850. Okay, now I'll just give you some idea here. The register number is 1000. Okay, so that is for uh, voltage of line one to line two, face to face. Then register 1001. Okay, so that is read only. Then the unit will be voltage. Then that Data, the type or the data type of the register is integer 16 unsigned. Okay? So make sure you are using the correct type because if not, it will not display the correct value. So you will be having from your BMS, the display is different from the field. Okay? So make sure you are using. So this is the very important for a BMS engineer to hub during software integration. Okay, so let's say face-to-face, -face, voltage to line 2 to 3, line 3 to 1, then you can also display the face-to-neutral voltage. Okay, so face-to-neutral voltage. Then you can also face-to-neutral. Okay, this one is in voltage in one. Okay, voltage. In. Then you have also here beam and other information. Actually, there are so many information here. Okay. Current, you can also display the current. So what are the what is the register that is 10 1016? So you can also the current RMS current on page one. Okay. So it depends. Uh, you will always check the specification. What are the important points to be displayed? Because you don't need to display all this information. Maybe you will just display the face to face voltage and the current being drawn from its face and the power factor, okay? So maybe those information are enough. You don't need to uh, create so much traffic in your uh, BMS network, okay? So uh, let me go back to my system. Okay. 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 So now, as you can see here, the register I used here is 1001. Okay, I think this is a this is a face to face voltage from line two to line three. Okay. Now, okay, pole code is three. Now just use the what is being uh, offered here, except you have to specify the device address. That is the important one. Then the pole register, meaning which register you will pull, okay? Okay, so that is 1001 register. Okay, so four, okay, now, if your system is online, then you will see the vendor name, it's right there. Then you will see the product code, PRV00210. Then you will know, okay, this one will verify if your communication module is online or your BMS system is establishing or establish a communication to your to your uh, slave devices okay so to wrap it up what i have shown you here is 
how you are going to create the Modbus interface for your third-party system or for your software integration. An example of this is our uh, our communication module. How are you going to do uh, BMS software integration with this communication module which are getting information from your molded circuit breakers or from your ARCB? This one is used in my previous subject, we are using the same like this for air circuit breakers, then this one for MCCB. Okay, because in that project, they told me we need to show the information from its breaker and also from its variable frequency drive. Okay, so guys, uh, this is part one. Then I will be doing several uh, software integration using different uh, communication protocol. I think what I can show you is another BACnet NSTP, then BACnet over IP. Okay. So, guys, uh, once again, if you are new to my channel, please help me promote it by subscribing. You can like, make your comment. You can click the notification bell. You can share it to your friends who are wishing also to join an MEP company. Actually, this, is, this tutorial is useful also for electrical engineers who are going to, uh, maybe they will be the one to <clears throat> supervise the bill at the BMS uh, installation. Then they should have also some knowledge about the software integration. Okay. So once again, before I will end this tutorial, let me say God bless us all. Let's all be safe. And bye for now.